Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Daniel and welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing all of you beautiful people how to make one gallon of pineapple cider at home. In this video, I'm going to be going over all the ingredients you need to make one gallon of pineapple cider. I'm gonna be covering the method that you'll be using to make one gallon of pineapple cider. And then as you can see in front of me, I already have the finished product. I have the bottled pineapple cider, hopefully carbonated and ready to be enjoyed. But before I dive on in, I always wanna remind you that if you're having a good time here, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, if you wanna learn how to do more things for and by yourself, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wanna get into cider making or wine making, or if you just wanna see the ingredients or the method written down, go ahead and jump on into the description. So now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and start making our one gallon of pineapple cider. And if you wait till the end, you'll get to find out how that pineapple cider turned out. So let's go ahead and list those ingredients that you're gonna need for this one gallon of pineapple cider. So for this specific batch, the ingredients were fairly plain and simple. I used a little bit of ginger juice that I got from fresh ginger. I used one quart of pineapple juice and I used dull pineapple juice. It conveniently came in one quart cans and dull pineapple juice is an excellent juice. It tastes and smells so delicious. And then of course I used Mott's apple juice to fill up my carboy all the rest of the way. And then for the yeast, I used a quarter teaspoon of champagne yeast. Use whatever yeast that you feel is appropriate for this homebrew. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all the ingredients I used to make this pineapple cider. So now that we have the ingredients out of the way, let's go ahead and roll on in to the method of making this cider. So after I've sanitized all of my equipment, I start putting all of my juices into the carboy to mix them. I start with my ginger juice, which is fresh, and it's gonna add some kick to the cider. And then I'll move on to the dual pineapple juice, and dual pineapple juice is definitely the freshest, best tasting pineapple juice you're gonna get, unless you juice your own pineapples. And then of course I add my Mott's apple juice. Mott's apple juice has just been really consistently working for me, and that's why I stick with it. Then once all the juice is in the container, we give it a good vigorous shake before we take our specific gravity reading. And this specific gravity reading was right around 1.048, which is pretty typical for a cider. I just add that bit of cider back to the carboy, not without tasting it. And then I go ahead and add my quarter teaspoon of yeast. For this specific batch, I used champagne yeast, but use what you like. With the champagne yeast, this cider fermented beautifully, and then when I felt necessary, I racked it over because I really wanted this bad boy to be as clear as possible. When it was time to bottle, I added one cup of Mott's apple juice to the bottling bucket. This extra sugar allows it to carbonate in the bottle, and then I poured in that one gallon of pineapple cider to the bottling bucket. I went ahead and gave it a good mix before bottling, and then I went ahead and filled them all up. I prefer to use a bottle wand, but this time I just went with it. Using a bottle wand allows you to get more precise measurements whenever you're filling your bottles. Then of course I capped all the bottles with Freedom Caps and allowed them to sit and carbonate in the bottle. All right, beautiful people. So we used some awesome ingredients, some fresh ginger, some dual pineapple juice, some Mott's apple juice, and we took our time making this one. We actually started it on the 21st of January and bottled it on the 27th of February, and it's been about a couple weeks. So now that you know how to make your gallon of pineapple cider, let's see if it was all worth it and crack this bad boy open. So we can see our cider. This really didn't have very much sedimentation down at the bottom. It's only been sitting for a couple weeks. Um, so I wasn't too worried about that. But I'm not 100% sure if it's just the lighting. 
but this definitely seems like it is a paler cider than usual. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Pineapple juice really doesn't have the same amber color that apple juice does. It's a very yellowish pale color. You can definitely tell there's foam at the top and you can tell that there's at least a little bit of effervescence. So we're gonna go ahead and smell the bouquet, sip it, enjoy it, and talk about it. Let's do it. It's a little yeasty, as you would expect. I bottle carbonated it. I mean, it smells like a typical cider, but it smells like there's something a little bit more sharp to it. It doesn't have the fruitiest bouquet, but that's probably because I used a champagne yeast instead of an ale yeast, which I've been typically using. Not 100% sure why I did that, but that's the route that I went. Let's go ahead and taste it. It's definitely carbonated. It's kind of like a medium carbonation, not too light, not too heavy, right in the middle. The pineapple juice did exactly what you think that it would do. It added a little bit of sharpness. It's not overpowering, but it's more pungent than a typical cider. This is very refreshing, but it's definitely a lot more tart than a typical cider is. Other than that, there's really not a whole lot to talk about. It's not too fruity, which honestly I would have preferred. I think that whenever I do this batch again, I'm definitely going to try the ale yeast to see if it keeps a little bit more of the body there. It's very light. It's very refreshing. It's very easy to drink. It doesn't punch you in the mouth with pineapple, but it has that tartness to it. It has the acidity to it. Overall, I'm very happy with this. The only thing that I can think to say is that I think this would have had a better result if I would have went with the Safe Ale SO4 ale yeast, but I'm still very happy with this. And this is going to be something very light and refreshing to enjoy in the summertime. Summer is still a long ways away, but this is going to have some time to age. This has only been bottled for two weeks, so by the time that summer does roll around, I imagine this is going to mature quite nicely. So in summary, medium carbonation, which is a good sign. It's very light, very easy to drink, but a little bit more tart than a conventional cider. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is our pineapple cider. So once again, thank you all so much for being here with me. If you enjoy videos like these and you wanna see more content like this, if you wanna see my face more often, if you wanna learn how to do more things for and by yourself, then hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for future content. If you had a good time watching this video, if you got something out of it, hit that like button. I have more fun homebrewing ideas ahead and I can't wait to share them with you, but until then, happy brewing.